Hey, what's going on, everybody? Hope everybody's having a great day so far. So good. Round number two here on a Friday, December 4th. Um, prompting, like the Holy Spirit does, He prompts you to do something. I could be sitting here drinking a coffee. Hmm. Ah, uh, Folgers in my cup. What? What, Holy Spirit? <laughs> Knock you right out of there. Prompts you, right? So, am I going to focus on the prompting of the Holy Spirit, or am I going to finish worrying about my Folgers commercial and how good these coffee grains taste this morning? Nope, i got to put it down. The Lord calls like a boss at your job, says, Hey, put that coffee down. Come over here and help me. You can put the coffee down, run over. Holy Spirit's prompting, right? This with the, today's daily devotional out of the upper room where the world meets to pray. And we become one through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So today's lesson is prompting. And it's all about the Holy Spirit. And the reading comes from the book of John. Great apostle. Great man of God. Wrote the book of Revelations. Epistles 1, 2, and 3 of John. And uh, he did a nice little bit of writing here in the Bible for us guys. To share his experiences. Um, and his walk with Jesus. Um, he walked with Jesus. Loved Jesus. Saw what Jesus did. Heard what Jesus said. He wrote about it all. And this is what the Bible is. People seeing what they saw and writing about it. Just like a history book in high school, you read everything about Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, his wife, the cherry tree, etc., etc., and everybody believes that, right? Believe that. Believe the Bible, guys. It's a history book on people who are broken, depressed, and full of anxiety, hatred, um, you name it, starving, sicknesses, and God just swoops in and takes his mighty hands upon everything and heals it. This is what he can do in your life. Heal your life. Make you feel loved. Give you hope. Give you strength. Give you encouragement. Never to fear anything but God. I don't fear no man but God. And I say that in a humble way. You know. And uh, because man can take your life. Right guys. But he can't take your salvation. Always remember that. Okay. So we're going to get into this. John here we go. I'm reading out of the New King James Version. Nelson Study Bible. Chapter 12. 14 verse 26 and it says this and this is uh, Jesus speaking which gives me chills just thinking about this is a quote from Jesus but the helper the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name when Jesus ascends right in my name it says he will teach you all things and bring you rem bring your remembrance all things that I have said to you oh, amen on that scripture chapter 14 verse 26 very powerful go read it for yourself um it's amazing and <clears throat> jesus says he'll send you a comforter see it was god first and moses talked to god through the burning bush through a cloud right you know god was speaking through animals right the donkey at one time right to get a message across well you know later on here comes jesus now okay well now people flock jesus right right so the apostles that Good, great example is you know how, like Moses had to go to the burning bush you know talk to God you know through that you know was a you know just a visual for for Moses something to give something to look at I I would expect you know just something right and um so and the thing was the 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 bush was burning but it didn't disintegrate it just kept burning you know it's just God's you know just the way God is it's just so amazing so the apostles in the ship when it was getting ready you know the storm was happening and they ran down and found Jesus asleep in the bottom of the boat resting and said master master we're gonna we're gonna perish and jesus wakes up and says why ye have little faith i've just shown you so many miracles right just like the israelites when the red sea was parted what did they do go right back to complaining and moaning and groaning about how bad life is right after god just freed them from slavery <laughs> took them through a red sea showed them miracles uh, set the captives free he just did everything for them and he was still moaning and groaning just like people do today because Satan will distract you. As soon as God gives you a miracle, Satan will distract you. And now you've got about the miracles right in your hand. And you're looking over at the distraction of somebody cussing or someone gossiping or some evil act of hatred. You know, no matter what color people are. Hatred, not racism exists. Hatred exists, guys. Hatred. Racism covers a whole race of people. One individual's act of hate. Hate and love. It's no race, no color involved. It's just hate. You either got Jesus' love or you got the devil's hate in your heart. It's that simple. So quit pointing fingers at different groups of people because they're a different color. And let's point the finger at those people that are doing Satan's work. Praise the Lord. And uh, we let the Holy Spirit lead us. And 
the apostles had to run to Jesus. Now we run to the Holy Spirit to get back on track of this lesson. So now we got the Holy Spirit to run to, okay, for help, okay? He'll guide us. He'll lead us. He'll pray for us. Just like Jesus did everything for everybody. God did before Jesus. Jesus came. Now Jesus ascended, went up to heaven. He sent us the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. And let's see if I have a study note on 26. And yes, I do. <clears throat> and it says... Uh, it says here for 26, verse 26, it says, um, Jesus told the disciples these things while he was with them. <clears throat> but when the Holy Spirit came, he would remind the disciples of all things that Jesus said and would teach. This is how they were able to obtain and re retain, I should say, retain um, their their wisdom of God and Jesus to write these books. People said, how do they write these books? And da 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 it's God's Holy Spirit reminding them of what they went through. Just like I, God reminds me, the Holy Spirit reminds me of what I've been through. So I can share my personal testimonies with you of what God did for me in my life. And what I've been through, my daughter, what we've been through. And this is what God does. The Holy Spirit reminds us. He's like um, like a tutor, you know, would be there helping you while you're doing your homework. Well, Satan, or not Satan, <laughs> forgive me, Lord, the Holy Spirit will follow us through life. He lives in us. So as we go through life, he's like a tutor. He, he keeps teaching us, teaching us, teaching us, and reminds us, oh, hey, that scripture applies to that person at this very moment. Or pray for that person at this very moment and say this. And God gives me the right words and gives you the right words as a child of God. Receiving Jesus Christ, you have the Holy Spirit to be prompted to say and do things at certain times when you might not even want to do them. But when God says do something, you better go do it. Hallelujah. Here we go, get into the, the, the prompting, uh, the um, reading for today, the devotional, the upper room. <clears throat> years ago, my family and I decided to foster care, um, uh, let's see, years ago, my family and I decided to foster young girls. Each time a girl returned to her parents or guardians, we felt the Holy Spirit leading us through the bitter, sweet moment. That's what, that's what the Holy Spirit does. He just soothes you and gives you peace, man, no matter what's going on, you know. And remind you of things, you know. Don't do that. Do that. Say that, you know. Don't say that. <laughs> He's good, you know. Sometimes we mess up, but he'll keep us on track. Just block out all the uh, all the um, the worries because you grieve the Spirit. And just have a peace of mind and listen. No God's in control. Not this world or not anybody in it, but God is. But after a while, we were emotionally spent, right? After, you know, doing all this... Uh, um, fostering the young girls thing here. I can't imagine it's got to be tough being a parent and then bringing a, 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 a child in from another family who has to adapt and, you know, different things go on. It's a little harder than a regular child that's your own, I would imagine. You know, I can't really say for sure. It says, but after a while, we were emotionally spent and I decided not to accept any more foster children. So the stress kind of got to her. Then one day, a social worker called me at the school where I teach and asked if I could foster a young four-year-old girl who was siblings, had just been placed with other foster families. Wow, leaving her all alone. I told the social worker that I could not, that I could, that I could not do it, and I hung up on her. When I returned to my third grade classroom, feeling distressed, one of my students gave me a big hug and said, Teacher, you're so good. I felt like someone had thrown a bucket of cold water in my face. Me? Good? Because she's thinking, I just turned down a little four-year-old kid whose brothers and sisters got given away to families, and she's still stuck in foster care. Wow, I can't imagine the emotions of this lady at this, this particular moment. I just said no helping. I just said no to helping a four-year-old. I felt, I felt like the prompting of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit prompted her. When she was feeling like the bucket of cold water in her face, guys, at that very moment, God's Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God was convicting her, saying, you need to do this. This is why this, 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 um, um, this situation was presented to you. It wasn't by accident this pe these people called her. See, God is, always presents people, places, and things in our lives, you know. And it's for us to be there, to be with somebody, to be there at a certain time, to pray, to see something, to teach, to learn. And what this lady was feeling right here, to get back on point, is I felt like the prompting of the Holy Spirit. That's exactly what it was, conviction, right? So I... So I called the social worker, she did, and I said I accept a child if they would work quickly to find her a permanent home. A permanent a permanent placement <clears throat> with a different family uh, never happened, though. 
It says, this has been 14 years since the prompting of the Holy Spirit brought this small, fragile child into our home. Man, praise God. Is, is, is this incredible how God works, guys? She has grown into a beautiful young woman who has brought our family many blessings and has enriched our, our lives forever. Man, praise the Lord, guys. Wow. That's really amazing. I mean, it's a few things that stand out to me about when she was presented this situation. It wasn't by luck. They called her random. God prepared and planned and made this all happen and she turned it away but guess what the holy spirit came in prompting her to say give that lady a call back this is meant to be now little did she know if god said to her yeah adopt this kid you're going to have her for the rest of your life then you already know it's neat how god works through the holy spirit guys is because uh after she gets the daughter you know this this young child and she said, you know, find a, a, a fast placement for her. You know, we'll keep her for a while, but please hurry to find her a permanent home while we keep her at ours. You know, other, little did she know that that was going to be her daughter. Praise God, man. That's how he works and brings those miracles into our lives. Guys, uh, the thought of the day is I serve Christ when I heed the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Again, if I'm going to drink this and I'm going to read this and I'm saying I'm going to kick it today and I'm going to just chill out, uh, chill and relax today. And have some coffee and read my little magazine. Oh. Hello? Yeah, who's that? Oh, it's your neighbor. I need help moving a couch. <laughs> I'm no Jeff Dunham over here. <laughs> uh, I can't right now. I'm reading my magazine and drinking my uh, coffee. I got Folgers in this cup here, buddy. Right? So he goes away. Now I'll be sitting here reading my magazine. And guess what's going to happen to me? The same thing that happened to this lady, right? In this devotional. The Holy Spirit's going to convict me. While I'm reading this, I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, this was just great a minute ago, but, hmm. All right. This coffee don't taste so good now, and I really don't really want to read this. Well, ah, the Holy Spirit's convicting me. Ah, the guy who knocked on my door, the neighbor, I'm supposed to be there. I'm supposed to be helping him. See, now when we let things bypass, we miss blessings. We mess up God's plans for our lives and for those people's lives. And now God has to rearrange things to work another way. But we just missed out on the blessing, me helping my neighbor who just knocked on my door. But I told him my Folgers in my cup and my magazine were more important than him. you got to put God first, others second, and us last. So we always got to put the God first, then the prompting of the Holy Spirit just got me now to put my selfishness down and get up and be selfless and go help. And that's how that works, guys. So... The Holy Spirit prompting. When you hear the Holy, feel the Holy Spirit prompt you to do something out of nowhere. You could be doing anything, and all of a sudden you like call up Aunt Susie, or call up Uncle Mike, or Grandpa, or Grandma, or you know go visit that person. That's for a reason. You need to be there. You need to be talking to them people. And I got a couple opportunities in my life here just past that that I've uh, kind of put on the side. I got them, but I haven't inquired about. Okay, now who's this person, or what do I need to do, etc. So i got to make sure I do that today. The Holy Spirit's prompting me and reminding me of a few things I need to take care of. So that's how that works. But the prayer for the day is, Dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you in Jesus' name. Gracious God, I know you don't care if my hat's on or off, but I just take it off out of respect, Father. But I know you love me. I'm just going to put it back on, and you just want us to be us and be me, and I'm going to be me. Gracious Father, God Almighty, help us to discern the prompting of the Holy Spirit and care the most vulnerable and care for the most vulnerable among us in jesus name we pray amen we just have to look out guys for everybody around us that, that might be weaker than us might be um out there having trouble and stuff you know different things and uh, we just need to be there for them you know when we're weak just like they are the thing the difference maker between them and us is we have god's holy spirit to give us his his almighty strength and power guys it's that simple guys i love you very much get out there let this Holy Spirit prompt you, whether you're in a line at Walmart, here, there, whatever. Forget about the worries and everything. Focus on God. Listen to the Holy Spirit, right? Block your ears to all the worries and listening to everything going on around you. Block it out spiritually. Focus on God and say, what do you need me to do right now, Father? And he's going to tell you, and you have to go do it, okay? It's just what we need to do, man. It's God's the boss. This is his company, the Kingdom of Heaven Incorporated. And we working for him. He's the boss. He's the shot caller. And uh, we have to do what he says. Not out of fear. It says fear God. People say, what do you got to be afraid of? No, you don't be afraid of God. Fear is simply respect. 
Respect. Respect. The world's missing it because they're missing God. And nobody respects nobody no more. Nobody loves nobody no more. Nobody cares about nobody no more. See, with God, I have a lot of personal issues myself. But with God, I can hand them off to Him because they're so heavy. Now it frees me up to do what I'm doing in front of you right now. Holy Spirit power. Woo, woo, woo. He gives me what I need to push through, to get through, to give you God's word. You see how me doing God's work today, he gave me what I needed to get in front of this camera today, which I didn't want to do every day. It's tough, guys. I can't explain to you. But I know people need to hear this, and they're relying on God's word through me. And I have to step up and get through my little pity parties and aches and pains and everything and put that aside like Jesus did for us. And I have to do it for you, and you have to do it for someone else. And this is what we are, extensions of Jesus, our hands, our feet, our mouths, everything, guys. We're here to do the kingdom of heaven's work way up there, down here. And with God's power in us, we can do everything we need down here. With man, nothing's possible. With God, all things are possible. I love you guys. Have a blessed day. And if the good Lord takes me home before you, I shall leave the lights on like Motel 6. <laughs> I love you guys. Peace be with you, and may joy and peace follow you for the rest of your days and protection. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray for all my Christian brothers and sisters to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Fill them, my Father, with this prayer right now. As they watch this, let them feel the Holy Spirit power, Father, through this video, and let them feel your presence. Hallelujah. Look at those chills, guys. See those goose pimples, guys? I don't know if you can see them there, but uh, it's just the Holy Spirit flying through me, man. It's just a... Uh, Amazing feeling, and just, I always saw people <laughs> shaking stuff out on TV. I said, the people are on drugs, and man, I tell you what, there ain't no drug that can touch what God can make, how good God can make you feel. I love you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Get out there, keep smiling, keep shining, and I'm going to drink the rest of this coffee, which is Folgers in my cup. Now it's going to be in Daryl. Folgers in Daryl. <laughs> God bless you guys. I'll see you later, man. <laughs> Hallelujah!